Hello, hello everybody, Harris Lanter here, and welcome to the first episode of the Wintertooth campaign on Sort of War Warhammer with the Norska DLC. So we are playing as Throg, who, as you can see, is a powerful melee fighter, siege attacker tribute, powerful battle ability, copious vomit. Lovely. And he can construct a unique building in Troll Country. Interesting. And the Lord effects of Throg are physical resistance 10% for all Norse control and Norse and ice troll units. All units in Throg's army are immune to all attrition, which is really quite a good one there. Upkeep minus 15% for all Norse control and Norse and ice troll units. And we start with Norse and warhounds, Norse trolls, and Norse and ice trolls. We're going to be playing on hard difficulty on this campaign. We're playing it a little bit myself before starting the recording and it is actually more difficult than you might expect so that's why I've gone for hard. So let's start the campaign and get in there. Those in the north are closest to the gods. Their lands lie within the ebbing shadow of chaos. For in the land of monsters and ice, where no crops grow, they have to be. Thus, I have come to guide their raw talent. Why waste such savagery on each other, while the southern lands are ripe for ravaging? Hail, Throg, King of Trolls. You venture far from your natural lair. These lands are rich with meat and war. Feast upon them, grow in strength and number to bring ruin beyond. To the east, the icy mountains harbor the dwarfs of Krakadrak. They mine great treasures for themselves. But all of this can be yours for the taking. Or for the gods. To the south, kiss live. These men of the bear dare to rule your kingdom. Let them feel the power of the monstrous horde. Destroy Erengrad and reclaim your rightful throne in troll country. Beyond kiss live lies the empire. Its bickering states of power are ripe with treasures. Take from these soft, sullen lands and establish new ports on their shores from which you can raid further. Across the Sea of Claws, a would-be challenger lies in wait aboard his precious ship. 
devour him, and do as you wish with his marauding warriors. Throg, you are the Wintertooth, cunning and all-powerful. Let the realms of man suffer in horror and pain, as your monstrous horde lays waste to all. The harsh and desolate wastes of Norska embrace you into its cold and wintry grip, my lord. Yet it cannot sustain your appetite for war indefinitely. You will need to voyage from this land to raid and pillage. Your gods will gaze favorably upon you for this. Raise in their name and align yourself with one to be granted their twisted and ruinous gifts. Okay, here we are starting this campaign. So our chapter objective is to attain level 1 allegiance with any god, which is one of the new features of Norska. And we gain a treasury of a thousand. And how they play the Northern Marauders thirst for battle, raiding and pillaging the lands across the Sea of Claws under their patron god's ever watchful gaze. Form an allegiance and devote yourself to one of the gods. Be their champion and raise the world in their ruinous name. The gods offer great rewards and bonuses once a significant amount of allegiance has been pledged by erecting great monoliths in raised settlements. Norsk settlements generate only a small amount of income, but their main source comes from raiding and sacking their rivals' lands. To sustain a larger force, you'll need to adopt their barbaric nature too. The monstrous Arcanum allows you to embark on wild hunts to track and defeat the most ferocious of beasts. Defeating them grants powerful items and some of the captured beasts to command in battle. Confederate the Norsecan tribes by defeating their leaders in battle. This will greatly improve your diplomatic standing with them. Marauder outposts can be established at conquered coastal settlements outside Norska, enabling basic recruitment options and locations from which to replenish your armies. Securing major capital cities allows fully developed Norsecan settlements to be built and unlocks unique technologies that can be researched. Cool. So that is Norska in a nutshell. Right we start rooms. here in the Winter Pyre on the northeast side of the Norsecan outcrop or mountains, you could say. Right next to the dwarves. We're not at war with, we start at war with the Acelings. Or, they're called Nagel Farlings in this one. Fair enough. Start out with some sparring fields. Give us some Marauders, Marauder Hunters, Marauder Spearmen, Marauders. We can upgrade to a Raider's Camp for 2000 to be able to recruit Marauder Berserkers, Marauders with great weapons if we have a Smithy, and Marauder Hunters to eventually get to Marauder Champions and Marauder Champions with great weapons. So we're going to do that. My Ice Age comes. Send Throg I into the Winter that. Pyre. We're going to need to recruit some more units. So we'll start with the basic Marauders. Because they have shields and their melee attack is better. So going to get to anyway. Recruit a couple of them. I think attacking the dwarves so early would not be a good idea. Dwarves generally being very strong and armoured, and Elskins being better than they were before the DLC, of course, but I'm still finding my feet with how to play them, so it take a little bit slower than usual, I think. I think we're probably going to go for the Sea Marauders tools, go down this path first for a little bit. Improving leadership, campaign movement, vigor loss, income from sacking, and immunity to high seas attrition. So yeah, some of these are going to be pretty good when you get down these. So let's go for that. Okay, we're recruiting, we've only got one settlement to deal with. Our income is not amazing, and I think it's mainly the fact that Norsons don't actually do very well about income anyway, so 
I'll have to keep a close eye on that. Maybe have to play more in a chaos manner of looting, raising, and pillaging, but we'll see. Varg have declared war on Kislev. Goromandi tribe have declared war on the Red Eyes. The Goromandis are. Yes, they are the ones that spawn in Bearsling Camp and Frozen Landing. So the first targets of the uh, Chaos Invasion when they arrive. And I would actually be interested to see the kind of a relationship the Norskans have with the Warriors of Chaos when they do rock up, but we'll see. I eat my enemies! So we're getting some Marauders to flesh out our army. We're gonna recruit a couple more. One more turn until we can start getting some Marauder Berserkers, I think. On Marauder Hunters, we'll have a look at what they are and go from there. Cool. Raiders Camp is now completed. It wins a magic change, but we're not actually using any magic at the moment. Right, let's have a quick look at the building browser. So, you see our settlements, or at least our main settlement in Winterpyre. There's a minor settlement can only go to tier 3. Oscon Wharf. So we've got some technology buildings. Four beasts. Skin wolves. Skin wolf Werkin. Champion. Norsk and Ice Wolves. Then you get to Skin Wolves that are armoured. That should be pretty good. Regeneration as well. The Skin Wolves regenerate in general. They do. Interesting. Then you got the Norsk and Trolls. Barrel and Manticore. Demir Balefang Shadows. Ancient intrinsically evil race of amphibians. The female worshipped the ruinous powers long before the fickle. God's attentions were drawn by man's potential. Okay, so they're kind of little amphibious creatures. Fumia warriors, great weapons. Ah, so they're some monstrous infantry and frost worm. Which needs you to get an offering of war. Ah, an offering of slaughter to get Norskan ice trolls. Okay. Chaos totem let's get a feral mammoth or war mammoth Oscan giants cool and a couple of sorcerers metal death fire interesting okay that's what buildings we have as a Norse there's not very many economic ones loot piles for growth and research rate first dash for income which is a maximum of 300 income generated, but it improves the income from raiding faction-wide and from sacking settlements faction-wide, so that's not horrible, but it's not amazing either. My ice age comes. So here we are, let's look at the Marauder Hunters, armor-piercing missiles, decent melee combat. So I think these throw axes, but they're not necessarily melee fighters, but armor-piercing missiles, quite good. Marauder Javelins, or Marauder Hunters. Just throw Javelins at the enemy. But I'm probably going to go for Marauder Berserkers as kind of a fast anti-infantry damage dealer, as you can see there. Melee attack is a lot better than the Marauders, but obviously its melee defense is lacking because it's got no shield. Who's going to anyway? Let's get a couple of them and a Marauder. Bearing in mind our income is going to drop like a rock as we build better units. Okay, so we've got the Sea Marauders tools built, increasing our leadership. So we're going to go straight for the Corpulent Sales to improve campaign movement range. The Marauder Berserkers do cost a little bit more. We've only got 250 income left. So that means we probably should get two more Marauders and then go from there. I'm not sure if we should go straight for the Aislings Conclave or if we should 
scoot around to the altar of spawns. Battle time is feeding time! We also got quite a fair amount of regiments of renown for the Norsecans. Interesting. Can't wait to get some of these guys then. Ah, Monster Hunt. So this is where you get regiments of renown from Monster Hunt and then the Ice Hall and Mirages are the first ones you can get. Okay. You get a War Mammoth at a maximum level. But you can get the Cold Voider, Frostworm, the Great Morherd of Bloodfjord, Feral Mammoth, the Ice Force Legion Siege Artillery, is that a Doom? Doom Cannon? Yeah, it is, I think. So yeah, you can get three regiments of renown from doing. Oh, this is if you get the Hound God. Okay. Hound. There we go. A unique and extremely powerful Hell Cannon battery unit, the Ice Forge Legion, will be available from the regiments of renown pool. Okay. So you can get a. Lord of Change, if you go towards the Eagle. You can get a Chaos Sorcerer. I know. Devastating Plague will be unleashed across the world, your faction being immune. A Chaos Sorcerer, Champion of the Ser Serpent. Kiha the Tormentor. Or, yeah. Okay. So interesting things to align yourself with each god. Okay, so we are at our limit. So we're going to head towards Aislin Concave. And they have 13 units with a garrison of 5 with, oh god, Marauder Champions. Not sure I want to deal with them. Am I in their re region yet? I can't quite tell. I don't think. I don't know. Maybe I am. Let's go into raiding stance. Yeah, it's definitely not mine. Gain a little bit of extra income while we're here. I wonder if I can try and force them out of their settlement. Try and go into a raiding camp. I think ambushing would be a good idea because the ambush chance is pretty pathetic. Or you can go into the forest here and go into ambush, so I might try that next turn. But I doubt they would go straight for my settlement, it looks like they're quite happy to stay where they are. Let's give it a go. Into the forest. All right, go on, do it, come at me. I bet they won't. They haven't moved a muscle, so they're not planning on ambush foiled. Damn. Right, All right. What we'll do instead Nostra. is Cross siege them. It's it. giving us about 50-50 chance. They have got a frost worm. How have they got off Rossworm? Oh my god. Alright. I'm gonna encircle and see what they do. Ideally, I would want them to attack me without their garrison, but obviously, they're gonna attack with the garrison because it gives them more of a chance. Marauders with great weapons and. Their main units. Trying to think. Hmm. I might see if I can force them out of the settlement. But it doesn't matter either way. Let's have a look at the map. Quite open. Crossworm is something we're going to want to deal with at some point. It's giving us about a 50 50 balance of power. 
how much melee infantry do they have? Not as much as me. Alright, let's give it a go. A quick save just in case of a crash. And fight the battle. Alright, this is going to be a very trying battle, I think. I mean, the Frostworm could be a problem. I might have to make sure Rog mainly targets the Frostworm. They've got reinforcements coming from the backside. It's literally an uphill battle, which isn't great for us, but I can't really do much else about that. Right. want to keep some further on the flanks just in case. Trolls and Throg group together. Put the Marauder Berserkers around the back. I should probably keep my Warhounds and Ice Wolves together but where should I put them? I'll put them on the right flank because they're coming from the left flank. So I could probably got more chance to manoeuvre around here. Okay. Keep them there. Send everything. Zoom out and bog. Right. They have kind of spread out. Let's do that instead. Cool. It's a frog on the trolls. I have somewhere else to move. And then up there. There's these guys. Send them up. Yeah, the frostworm is some problem here, but I'm going to probably use the Trolls and Throg to engage it when it comes down. I might throw some, like, can I vomit on him? No. Come on then. Let's move him around. Actually no. Of course they're going to skirmish. What they do. Or a living. I need to engage these axes quickly. Come on, my ice walls. You need to actually do something in this battle. Come on, move. I'll just engage fully. Go on there. The frostworm has. Come out of battle. Frog engage their lord. Trolls come in. I am worried about some of these units. Oh, actually managed to hit them there. Engage them quickly. Kill their main general, that will severely help us here. Broken them. Keep on the attack then. They're gone. One of my units is starting to come out though. I'm gonna throw up on him. Ugh. Ugh. That's disgusting. But oh well. It worked. Get my wolves out. Go, 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 go. Attack. 
kill their lord quickly. Ah, one of my wolves units has decided it wants to die. Come on, kill him. Or it's too late. Send some of these units off. As if the spear unit is just cold so long. Right, throw up on him. Try and finish him off. Yes! Get it. Alright, let's go. Keep, keep up the onslaught. I think we can take this, but we just need to make sure we are increasing the pressure. Got my ice walls back. Get them in. Move, 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 move. Engage them. Javelin's causing a lot of damage, more than we need. Oh, my trolls are having a bit of a problem here, but I think we are turning the tide of the battle now. Come on, break them. Break them. I need to completely wreck them now. We are breaking them in the center. Keep on the onslaught. Got better things to do. Come on. Keep chasing them. Right, I think we have victory. Bloody hell, that was a little bit more painful than I would have hoped. Pyrrhic victory. Bloody hell. But it's still a victory at the end of the day. So we'll take it. 69 kills for our regular Norskan trolls. 100 for our Norskan ice trolls. 172 for our wolves there. Quite nice. Frog and our damage dealers doing pretty well. Our rod is actually not doing too bad across the board. Their frostworm getting no kills. Good. Exactly what we needed. I actually did not keep an eye on that during the battle. It could have easily come back, but we did it. Gain a Pyrrhic victory. Didn't lose any units, it looks like. Gain a lovely bit of loot. A rank for Throg. And I think we are probably going to enslave to replenish. Ah, Corpulent Sales. Campaign movement range increased. Which means we could go for Champions of War, Income from Post-Battle Loot, Stronger Ores for Figure Loss Reduction, mm. Longer Hulls, Income from Sacking. I'll go for Longer Hulls first, and then I think we're going to go for Champions of War. Alright, we can take a look at the skill tree for Throg. It obviously starts out with Copious Vomit. Which is a uh, magical and fire damage magic missile. I think what's kind of special for him. Yeah, it looks like they've got a lower requirements for the middle two tiers. But you need to have five skill points in the previous group to be able to unlock fight or die and stand or die. Which actually both I or die seems like a pretty bloody good ability because it's an augment in an area for leadership and melee attack. Norse resilience. Specialty replenishment rate. Spawn of chaos. Unit experience gain per turn. Oh my. Savage skills. Masters of the Fen. Cool. What else have we got? Seems pretty normal for the melee abilities, apart from the copious vomit, of course. 
Wintertooth Crown Quest Battle. Nice. King of Trolls, Public Order plus 2 in local province. Upkeep minus 10% for all Norse control, Norse control, eye trolls, and Fiumia warriors in Lord's army. Okay, so you can improve the. What is it? The uh, upkeep of your troll units even more. Actually, I've not spelt the point. What should I spend it on? Ooh. Wild beasts, warhounds, rod hunters, fearsome warriors from rod berserkers, champions of the north from rod champions. Frostworm, give me warriors, frostbitten, north controls, and Norskan ice trolls, icy wrath. Nothing really improving the melee infantry of these guys, but I'm going to go for Root Marcher. It's the general accepted first choice. Taste my vomit. Oh wow. So they actually. Hmm. Could I check if I've defeated their main chap in battle? A timely arrival. My war oh, I can. haven't eaten in days. So I beat them. I beat their main leader in battle. So I can force a peace treaty and join confederation. So there we go. Oh, so confederated with the Nargo things. Enslave the southerners. Oh, I could take the frostworm. I'm gonna do it. The hound compels. Anyone else that I want? Nope. Just a frostworm. By the Get rid of them because they're costing me too I much money. My enemies. It's very expensive though, a frostworm. But yeah. Crossbones. Oh. Right, so what do we have here? Income generated. I'll get rid of the income generated in the main Aisling Conclave province. I will remove the Winter Pyre building. Build it here. And yeah. Gaining a Frostworm is quite the achievement here. Cool. Root some more marauders as we healed them up. Good. So we've uh, completely gained the Mountains of Hell. I don't think we have any edicts as the Norskans, but there we go. Not a bad start then. I was quite worried we might potentially lose that first battle. But here we are. Battle time is feeding time. So. Bloody Bulwark, which could improve leadership when under siege and melee defense when under siege. By the more of a garrison. Uh, perhaps not. Ruinous also, which improves public order. But I might build that in the Winter Pyre rather than our main building. We probably should build the smithy, to be honest. Here. Let's do that. And we can afford the ruinous altar, so let's build that as well. So, gonna end the turn. And then we'll think about who to attack next. Chimera Frenzy. Pride of monstrous Chimera has flown down from the mountain reaches, or displaced by some other foul threat, and are causing havoc amongst the populace. It'll be some time before they can be removed. Unhappy. Oh dear. That's not a great thing to happen, because public order seems to be some issue for Norskans. We're building a public order building in one turn. Building the smithy in two to get some rods with great weapons. Our frostworm is almost fully replenished. Probably go after Varg next, I guess. Although they do seem to be quite large power. 
Perhaps the dwarves. Or maybe if I go after the Goromandi. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. So yeah, we're just going to replenish a little bit longer and then think about what we can do next. Ruinous altar built, which has improved the public order, but we are having military presence here, which is boosting it even more. So there is that. I might have to attack the Varg, but are they at war with anybody? They are all with Kislev and Krakadrak. Look at Krakadrak. They're just at war with Varg, but we are apparently massively stronger than they are. Maybe it's time to attack the dwarves, because we've got a settlement we can build here. Looks like the Goromandis have been attacking them, so yeah, maybe that is a good idea. Head out. Cool. Because we can hit Kazid Borkarag, gain some money from that, and we can take Shostraken, as long as the Goromandis aren't doing it. I think they might be raiding the dwarves. And then we're going to think about attacking Krakadrak later. Built a smithy. We are fully replenished. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a garrison. But I don't think it's going to be enough to face us. Might be able to see what's in Cracker Drac if it's completely empty, we'll just attack that. Eric Christiansen is ready. Battle time is feeding time. That cracker might be completely empty. My axe thirsts for war. Mm. My ice age comes. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna be a massive douche nozzle and take it. Poor dwarves. I feel really sorry for these guys. They never survive very long. <laughs> Trying to be the last holdout in the northern halls. Battle time is feeding time. I'll get there. Raid a little bit. Hopefully, I should gain a rank soon to be able to get our first regiment of renown. Be a nice addition. There we go, speak of the devil, the Ice Horn Marauders. Means we have a skill point for Throg. Growth. Lost resilience. Serve or die. Despoilers. I think I want to get towards fight or die, if I'm honest. We'll go down Voice of the Dark Gods which should unlock improving rolls or Fimia Warriors or Frostworm, which we actually do have a Frostworm, so maybe boost our Frostworm here. And if you have any name suggestions for any or all of the units, please feel free to add them down in the comments below. Mainly we can name our Ice Troll, Norskun Troll, Frostworm units. Perhaps even our Norskan Ice Wolves and Norskan Warhounds, unless you have lots of idea names for Marauders and Marauder Berserkers, then yeah, please do feel free to add your suggestions. If I want to get the renowned unit, I'll have to. No, I can't. Oh well. Never mind. Play a war on Krakadrak. Hit their main settlement. And just because we have a 75% chance of taking it, and I don't particularly fancy fighting Longbeards because they are ridiculous to kill, I'm going to auto resolve this one. Not losing too much there, Pyrrhic victory, but gaining a little bit of loot. 
I don't think we can colonize this with it being a dwarf and hold. Is yours to do with as you please. Whether that be the establishment of a camp to recruit and build from, or to devote it to one of the gods by raising it to ash and ruin, gaining their favor and gifts. So yeah, this is a new lovely feature of the Norskans raising a settlement for one of the Norskan gods. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sack it, and then we're going to raise it after to raise for one of the people. But I'm trying to think, what do I want in general? I think a devastating plague would be awesome. However, reducing upkeep for all units. I think you can kind of go down most of them. Oh no, you can't. It reduces favor. Uh, oh, it reduces it by a little bit, so you could probably do a balancing act. But yeah, we're going to sack it. Can't go into raiding camp. But, oh well. We'll raise it next turn. Longer hulls, income from sacking settlements. Well, that could have been nice in last turn, but no, well. Yeah, because we get monster hunts if we go down the monster hunter tree. Which is obviously a good idea. Okay. But yeah, I'm going to go down Champions of War to gain. Income from post battle loot plus 10%. Beast. Frog's Mutant gonna hit crack and drop again. Oh no, we lost a Norskan Warhound unit. That sucks. Oh well. And we're going to raise it for. I'm gonna do it for the Serpent because I like reducing upkeep. But it's gonna be a while before we get towards it. You have chosen to pledge allegiance. The gods will be pleased. Their favor towards you grows. Keep their gaze upon you by erecting further monoliths in their name and reap the benefits they bestow. Alright, so it got minus two or anything with the crow's favor. So we're getting. It's gonna take a while to get to the serpent's gaze. I see death. I'll have a crack. Doesn't matter. That was my idea. So I've raised so. Cracker Drack. Oh, Shaw's Tracken has taken. I mean, who are they? The Goromandi? The Goromandi have taken Shaw's Tracken. So we'll probably have to fight them as well. Oh dear. Whatever shall we do? Clan Enclave. Income generated public order. The public order. Not amazing. Not amazing. Hmm. I think I'll wait for a sec. Time is time. We've got skill points, so I'm going to improve the Frostworm that we have. I'm quite happy we've confederated then instead of just killing them. Yeah, I do need to take Sosh Draken. I eat my enemies. How much do I need? Minimum of 50%. No stopping me. Do we need to replenish a little bit? Winter magic change. Alright. I think this is where we're going to leave this episode for today. I hope you've enjoyed. Please leave a like if you did, but you don't have to. The dislike button is right next to it. Subscribe if you want to see more from this campaign and just letting you guys know I will be streaming it as well on my Twitch channel twitch.tv slash hacks of the hunter which I will be doing a Wolfric Norska campaign on stream as we're doing the Winter Tooth on YouTube. So yeah. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>